SCP-1342. In most cases, the SCP Foundation deals with active anomalies that typically exhibit aggressive behavior and attempt to destroy particular humans, our civilization in general, or the fabric of time and nature itself. However, SCP-1342 is a mere artifact left by something that humans accidentally created, discovered, and then destroyed without hesitation. Let's take a look. SCP-1342-1 is a replica of Voyager 1, a space probe sent out in the late 70s. In addition to scientific instruments, it contains a gold-plated disk containing basic information about human civilization, such as images, music, photos, and greetings in 55 languages. The exact replication of the original probe extends to sensor packages and apparent chemical composition. However, some components appear to have been constructed based on incomplete plans or parts. As a result, several components were non-functional upon discovery. SCP-1342-1 was initially detected on 25 September 1982, approximately 35,000 km above the Earth's surface, traveling at a suborbital velocity. Two days later, it crash-landed 300 km east of Baker Island, Pacific Ocean. SCP-1342-1's detection was possible due to a large burst of Cherenkov radiation that occurred upon its appearance. It was currently unknown how SCP-1342-1 remained intact during its descent, despite appearing to have similar chemical composition to the original Voyager. SCP-1342-2 is a gold-plated phonograph record with specification matching the golden records carried in the Voyager probes. Instructions for playing and decoding remain original. However, the pulsar map has been altered to show the star Gliese 445 as the origin of SCP-1342. For reference, Gliese 445 is a small star approximately 17 light years from Earth, and Voyager 1 is meant to fly near it in around 40,000 years, if it's lucky enough. When decoded, SCP-1342-2 contains a variety of cultural and scientific data in the form of images and audio. Approximately two hours of audio recording are present, consisting of a various form of music and a tonal buzzing. Part of the music appears to be an excerpt of Cavantina from the string quartet number 13 B flat, opus 130 by Beethoven. The encoded images vary greatly in content, but all contain physical or chemical information on the subject, AG size, mass and orbital period of a planet, and a string of pictorial characters. A radial symmetric organism, referred to as SCP-1342-3, is shown in various stages of development. Fully grown, this organism is approximately 2 meters tall and has three legs and three elongated arms, with each hand having three fingers positioned around the central axis on a roughly cylindrical torso. Three snout-like protrusions exist in the place of a head, each ending in a beak. 82% of the encoded images show SCP-1342-3 in a wide variety of presumed cultural settings. Scenes identified include agriculture, manufacturing, urban crowds and the playing of music on a string and bow instrument. Images of a number of celestial bodies are also included, such as Venusian type world with high atmospheric pressure and a star matching Gliese 445 stellar spectra. One planet shown has a partially Earth like surface with visible liquid water, urban areas, and sandy desert. The planet has larger than expected storms and ice caps that would be suggested by physical quantities supplied by SCP 1342 and appears to be undergoing massive ecological collapse. An outline of a specimen of SCP-1342-3 is shown next to this planet. This planet is shown to have extensive orbital infrastructure, not limited to spacecraft manufacturing facilities, captured asteroid mining operations, and space elevators grounded near urbanized and wasteland areas. All of these images show the structures to be in erect or neglected state. The final encoded image shows a vessel heading towards an extremely damaged Taurus-like space station with a 2 km diameter aperture at its center. 
55 greetings in different languages are also present, just like the original golden plate. At this point, one might think that this is a story of an alien civilization developed under the light of a nearby star, which met its unfortunate end due to some cataclysmic event. However, the final, 56th recording, tells another story. Let me read it in full. This Voyager spacecraft was built in the year 42,412 AD by the species you come to refer as the Galician. We are a community of 300,000 beings inhabiting Galea's 445C. This is our message to your world. Even since we discovered radio, we have lived in your shadow. Decades were spent unraveling your signals, searching for answers among the tenuous strands of reason. Through the static and the chaos we found you. From your small, distant world we found your images, your music, your thoughts, your feelings and your indomitable signs. We communicated with your world governments who kept our existence secret from you. To prevent a culture shock with their own populace or to reduce your impact upon our own species, it did not matter to us. We could touch the mind of another and now we are not alone. We learned from you. The scientific revolution following our meeting was miraculous. We lived beyond our natural years and we lived well. Humans uplifted us into an Elysian state, but we could never thank you. From our faraway place, we quietly deciphered your secrets and over time our technology became your equal. Together we went, advancing our mastery of the universe. We shared our technology with your leaders in secret to try and repay you for all you will do. In time came the gates. At the great expense of energy, we could obtain limitless velocity. With time dilation preserved, we could fly to the universe's birth and its death. The entirety of creation was within our mutual grasp. However, that would not be. Before we emerged, the people who live in your planet crippled us. From the sky above, in bright blue flashes, our lives were ended. We do not know the reasons, nor do we know why their hand was stayed enough to forestall our extinction. But now we live on a dying world. Our children are sick. Our water is polluted. We cannot maintain our technology. We will not go on. To save ourselves, we could have tried to destroy you. It cannot be denied, this is how some of us felt we should act. We could still hear your world, unknowing, uncaring. With what little power we had left, relativistic destruction could reduce your planet to ashes as it was forming. It is shaming, but we came so close. We hope you can understand why we thought what we did. But maybe, if you could change what happens, if you could destroy you, then you could save us. From the stars came Voyager, your gift. In sending your message, filled with your music and your joy, you showed such touching desperation to find another. We fell in love all over again. We had but one chance to put things right. I do not know if you can save us. I do not know if you can change who you one day may be. You say you are trying to survive through your time, so you may live into mine. I really hope that you, you, do. But above all else, there is one thing you need to know. From one maker of music to another, across all worlds, all times, no matter what you do or what you become, you are nothing less than beautiful. So, once there was, or is, a civilization inhabiting Glea's 445C. At some point they discovered radio technology and began intercepting signals we were beaming into the infinite void of space, radio broadcasts, TV shows, satellite communication, and so on. Unknowingly, we fed our knowledge to this new civilization, accelerating their development to the point where they surpassed their creators. They managed to master the time itself, traveling to the very end or to the very beginning of the universe. However, at some point humans started to perceive this civilization as a threat and without any explanation wiped it out. Only 300,000 individuals, a population size comparable to a small city, remained alive, 
far fewer than necessary to sustain their technology and society. They could go back in time and destroy humanity even before the first cells appeared on Earth, but doing so could cost them their own existence, as without our knowledge they might not survive at all. With the dawn of the time came Voyager 1. Long silent, it arrived among them, carrying information and music from a time when humanity was not yet capable of planetary destruction. And the Glitians responded, carefully recreating the message and sending it back in time, hoping that someday humanity would change its course, exhibiting a dignity and patience that we can only dream of.